Hello and welcome to Managing International Payments in the New World with James Allen from Payoneer. Before we get started, I'd like to take you through the event console on your screen. You'll see my video alongside the slides and speaker information on the right. If you have any questions, please drop them into the Q&A box. Slides and other useful resources are available for you to download below. You can find tools using the menu bar at the bottom of the console. You can also check out the full agenda at any time by clicking on the Lin Academy agenda image. At the end of the session, you'll be able to select your next topic or head back to the agenda to find out more. So let's get started. I'd like to welcome James, VP of Europe at Payoneer. James will unpack his key learnings from 2020 and identify the lasting changes we'll see affecting retailers in the new world of e-commerce. Take it away, James. Hello, everyone. My name is James Allen. I manage the European region for Payoneer. And today, over the next 20 minutes, uh, I thought I'd give you a quick overview of some of the trends that we're seeing in payments uh, in 2020 and uh, beyond. Um, so really, as we look at this year, there are five key payment trends that have helped shape the year so far. Um, first of all, regulation. Um, and really, uh, what we're seeing here is that regulators are directing attention uh, on risk reduction, standardization, and a topic called open banking, which I'll expand on shortly. Um, as disruptive technology and new entrants uh, come into the market, uh, regulators try and prioritize things like data protection, so uh, around uh, topics like GDPR, and, and uh, uh, they also look at open banking, um, which is an initiative um, to really open up the rails for companies like uh, Payoneer and some fintechs um, to access the, the, the back office. Uh, cryptocurrency is a big topic uh, that regulators are, are paying close attention to, and here it's about the need to address uh, potential tax evasion and money laundering. Um, and then we're seeing a, a theme around regulation with uh, uh, what's called big tech, so um, trying to create a level playing field for all players, whether they're big or small. Uh, digital identity. Um, this is about uh, ensuring secure access and, and data integrity. And, and the trend here is looking at uh, universal standards that will really synchronize the various schemes um, and enable digital identity to be used commercially. Instant payments. Um, so really here we have um, uh, the actual front end that you see, the, the payment itself, um, but then to be able to power that, um, there's a lot of work going on in, in, in the open banking so that players like Payoneer can, can access the, uh, the rails of the banks. Um, but the banks themselves have uh, uh, really built their technology um, over the last 40 years and, and it's a bit creaky in places. So there's a lot of uh, uh, work here um, required to kind of ensure that, that payments really get to the instant standard that everyone is um, hoping for. Um, merchants are, are prompting banks and financial services players to offer additional payment methods. Um, part of this is uh, linked to uh, Generation Z and, and their purchasing power and their desire for alternative payments and economic and customer preferences um, moving towards digital wallets and online and app based uh, services are a key factor here. But generally it's about a convenience and a faster checkout process. Um, and then the fifth area we've seen is, is around um, non cash payment methods and uh, this has really been intensified this year um, in the wake of, of COVID-19. Um, and the share of non-cash, so here we're talking about things like mobile, QR payments, digital wallets, and contactless cards uh, has very much increased. And, and the drivers uh, here are a lot around um, reduced costs, it's, it's increased convenience. There's some geopolitical and regulatory um, factors at play here as well. So we have um, um, some trends around demonetization in India, uh, and then the payment services directive in Europe as well is um, playing a, a force here. Um, and generally, um, some societies have already moved to, to uh, quite a cashless system. So countries like Sweden and Finland have um, uh, really led the way here. And we've seen uh, trends over the last couple of years in, in South Korea um, follow quite closely. Um, and then finally, the, the kind of the, the point around uh, uh, alternative payments methods is, is off the back of a, a lot of e-commerce growth as well um, and innovation. Specific to Payoneer, market trends that we're looking at at the moment um, cover the five key areas really. So e-commerce, um, live streaming, freelancing, remote working, and then e-learning. 
we spent a bit of time probably on the most relevant one for this audience, e-commerce. Um, uh, so trends that we're seeing uh, look around personalized experiences, uh, social commerce, uh, there's a lot of work and focus around influencer marketing. Uh, growth rates, um, if, if you look at groceries, um, is around, uh, it's is pretty, uh, pretty solid uh, regardless of the demographic, but millennials and Generation Z are, are still leading the way in groceries. Um, uh, I think 46% um, are, are now using online grocery this year versus 28% of baby boomers and what we call the silent generation. Um, but when uh, uh, it, it's slightly more balanced when you look at um, e-commerce um, and you actually have 43, uh, nearly 40% of uh, seniors and, and boomers have made at least some digital shopping shifts this year uh, and over half of that are permanent. Um, Looking into some of the other verticals that, that we deal with, um, we've seen some big inroads this year into live streaming and, and digital entertainment. Um, freelancing is a big area for us at Pioneer and we're um, seeing uh, as, cust as, as uh, companies are looking at reducing their, their labour costs and, and a drive to efficiencies, they're exploring more freelancing opportunities. Um, remote work kind of cuts across all the sectors that we work with, um, with many large companies now um, stating that they're going to be uh, home base until uh, uh, mid part of next year. Um, this is changing the landscape for for many um, many sectors. Um, and then the, the other area that we're seeing a, a steep increase is e-learning. And um, I, th I suppose that maybe the uh, with students returning to university and uh, most of that being remote, um, maybe the value for money has been looked at a bit more closely. And we're certainly seeing an uptick in. Uh, um, e-learning need and uh, uh, courses. Uh, with regard to payment trends globally this year, uh, probably three main buckets we can talk about. Um, there's definitely uh, an increase in dependency on cross-border flows and, and the UK in particular um, as an island and uh, as a, uh, uh, a country with their, their own uh, currency um, is a huge um, um, player in the cross-border payments world, which is why we see so many fintech companies based here. Um, we're seeing that domestic payments have seen some huge improvements in speed, uh, costs and efficiencies. Uh, in, in Europe, we have um, SEPA and faster payments that, that are pretty much uh, um, free for a lot of people now and, and pretty much instant as well. Um, and then the other area which is pretty interesting is around um, cross-border transactions for remittance purposes. Um, so this is around the um, idea of um, promoting financial inclusion, uh, for, uh, and in, this involves things like money transfer and so on, uh, and it really is a force for good because it does support global development. Um, so it's pretty encouraging to see some continued um, progress there. For Pioneer this year, um, you can see some of the, uh, the growth rates that we've enjoyed around the world. Um, uh, it is pretty much um, um, skewed towards um, e-commerce sellers and freelancers um, and it should be um, taken into account that some regions are slightly bigger for us than others so um, I think we're, we're happy with the progress in all areas but um, when we look in uh, Europe for example it's a pretty big region for us now so uh, um, we're delighted to be seeing in excess of 30% uh, growth um, in e-commerce and uh, uh, that's a uh, also uh, continued in, in Asia um, and North America has seen an even bigger um, explosion in growth rates. Uh, in parallel to payments, what a lot of our customers are, are telling us um, is a need around um, small bid business lending um, and, and cash flow remains a global challenge uh, and uh, a lot of businesses and, and most of our customers uh, state that they regularly struggle with cash flow. Um, particularly um, if they're a newly established business. Um, and so uh, that a lot of SMBs have kind of found themselves in a position of being unbankable. Um, and worryingly, a lot of uh, our customers and SMBs are reporting using their own personal funds uh, for business purposes. Uh, so in Pioneer, we've actually launched a service called uh, Capital Advance. Um, so we, we try and help um, our, our customers with cash flow here. Uh, and that's a trend we're seeing um, in the wider industry as well. A lot of uh, fintechs are, are, are offering similar style services. Um, and so we expect that trend to continue where alternative financial providers um, will account for a much bigger market share 
uh, over the coming years. Uh, global payment trends. Um, well, economic confidence and spending habits are changing. Um, probably the biggest uh, change that we're seeing um, aside from that is around mobile commerce. And uh, more of our customers now are accessing um, Payoneer um, through mobile apps than uh, standard desktop uh, um, access. Uh, and, and that rallies, uh, that ties in quite well with some of the e-commerce trends that by the end of next year, um, we're seeing over 70% or we predict over 70% of market share of e-commerce will be via mobile. As we look a bit um, um, further ahead into 2021 and beyond, um, some of the trends we're expecting to see um, uh, largely are going to be uh, in the wake of the um, pandemic we're currently in. Um, so tighter cash flow um, management um, will be key here and, and a drive towards um, optimization and unnecessary spending being curtailed. Um, probably um, seeing, particularly in North America, a, a shift more towards um, contactless payments, um, following some of the trends we're already seeing here in Europe. Um, it's seen, uh, I think, uh, during the pandemic, a, a clear advantage here. Um, and the move away from cash and checks is probably going to be pretty permanent. Uh, online shopping, we think that's uh, here to stay. I mean, it, it's incredibly um, positive to see uh, those that have experimented during the pandemic. Um, uh, most of them expect to stick with it, um, regardless of uh, demographic or, or um, age. Um, and I think that a lot of companies will now include um, some form of digital payments um, within their strategy and infrastructure. Uh, it will be seen much more as an investment rather than an expense, um, particularly uh, the larger online, to, online retailers um, uh, that are, are driving, uh, that maybe have come from more of a, a high street uh, background. Um, Payment practices, we, we need to really see a bit more unification here. Um, so the US um, will need to standardize their payment structure um, for us to benefit from. Uh, and uh, like in the EU, um, where we've seen much more um, single payment languages, um, there'll be a need to take that on a more global basis. Um, credit and, and bad debts, um, because of the, the emphasis on cash flow, is going to be very much in focus. Um, and companies are going to be unfortunately faced with the reality of not getting paid. So um, uh, we are going to see a bit more uh, prevalence of bad debts. Um, one really interesting area that I think uh, um, we'll all benefit from uh, is going to be around um, blockchain. So this is, um, in, in layman's terms, the technology that underpins a lot of uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, the cryptocurrencies themselves are, are a separate topic, but the technology that enables them um, is pretty fascinating for us guys in payments. I liken it a bit to um, where we were with telecoms 10 or 15 years ago when a, an international phone call would be very expensive and poor quality. Um, now I expect uh, in coming years where payments will become um, pretty uh, uh, um, near to, to free uh, and instant uh, as a result of technologies like blockchain. Um, but with all of these changes, there'll be increased payments um, scrutiny. Uh, and uh, um, as a result of that, there'll be a requirement for much more security and um, uh, biometrics and digital IDs in particular um, will be um, put in place, we believe, to protect um, larger transfers at the very least. Uh, probably uh, no uh, presentation at the moment is complete without a mention of Brexit. Um, we're actually running a series of uh, webinars and, and uh, blogs at the moment um, until the end of the year. So I um, encourage you to check those out on our website. Um, and finally, just to, to recap where we are in, in terms of Payoneer. So we're now covering uh, 200 countries, uh, giving our clients access to 150 plus currencies. Uh, 21 offices now uh, and last year's uh, volume was in excess of uh, $30 billion and we're lucky enough to have uh, 4 million account holders um, and you can probably see here some of the uh, uh, great e-commerce names that we partner with and support. So thanks very much for your time and I uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you James, that was a really insightful session. Make sure you check out the agenda for an overview of what we have coming up or jump straight into your next session by clicking on one of our three channel options. See you soon.